Miss Chelsea Santos uh, is an uh, al- alumna of the Department of Ancient Indian History, Culture and Archaeology. Uh, she completed her undergraduate studies as well as postgraduate studies from the department in 2018. Uh, she finished her PG diploma as well from the CSMVS in the same year. Currently, she is working as an assistant curator at the City Palace Museum, Udaipur. Uh, Chelsea has a knack for photography. She also is blessed with talents of uh, the creative arts. And she's using these talents within the uh, scope and gambit of the museum itself. Uh, her basic mission is to take the creative arts and to use them as her curatorial position puts her into the scope of outreach for the City Palace Museum. And here we have her talk that is uh, outreach for the City Palace Museum as a case study by Miss Chelsea Santos. Chelsea, you can go ahead with screen share. Thank you so much, Professor Jason, uh, for that lovely introduction. Um, Good evening to everybody. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself again. My name is Chelsea Santos. I am the assistant curator at the City Palace Museum of Udaipur. Um, It is such an honor to be here today in uh, front of all of you, to be uh, once again with the department after having five years of association with it. Today, I will be talking about uh, the museum uh, and the curatorial outreach in a COVID and post-COVID world. And uh, before we jump right into the presentation, I would like to divide this, break up this uh, topic of mine into three parts. I will be talking about uh, the museum uh, in which I work in, the uh, curatorial role and the outreach involved. Uh, the museum, the City Palace Museum of Jaipur, it is, it is housed, um, it is uh, located in a very picturesque setting. Uh, you have the Aravlis surrounded uh, all over. You have the pristine waters of Lake Pichola. And uh, in itself, it is housed in, uh, in a very historic structure, 450-year-old plus heritage structure the former house, the, ro- the Royal House of Mewad. And uh, uh, it was in, in 1559 that uh, the foundation stone of this palace was laid. It was laid by Marana, Marana uh, Uday Singh II, the father of the renowned Rajput warrior king, Marana Pratap. And uh, over the years, several kings added on to this uh, heritage site. And uh, uh, it was in years later in uh, 1969, we have Marana Bhagwat Singh who converted this palace space into a museum. We have the Mardana and the Zanana section, respectively the uh, the palace for the males and palace for the ladies uh, that was converted into the museum. And uh, while the structure is 450 years old, the, uh, the museum has only completed 50 years uh, of, uh, very recently. And uh, in all this time that it has existed from whether it was as a, as a, as a palace, a living space, uh, to the time when it is now a museum, it has always been a cultural hub, always attracting people, getting together people. There's a lot of celebrations and uh, gatherings and uh, full of life and tradition. And uh, this is precisely what still continues in our museum. It, uh, uh, we are constantly in an interaction with our visitors. We've had uh, a tremendous inflow of visitors. In fact, in the year 2016, 2017 is when we reached our um, all time high of 1 million visitors in the year. And uh, during, uh, the question now comes to this situation of COVID when we have had a sudden uh, cut down. We have no visitors coming in at the moment. And um, how then do we interact with our visitors? So now I jump to my second part of the, uh, the breakup. We have uh, the curatorial role. Um, the reason why I am here is that uh, I perform the function of... Um, 
curating the digital space and uh, the reason why uh, a curator or a person from the curatorial department would be uh, someone who would uh, do this job is because uh, a curator or a curatorial person would know the collection better he would he or she would know what works for the audience uh, what what best feature of the collection should be featured how it should be featured and um, they also very importantly know how to layer out content uh, how much how much content is enough how much is too much and um, now we'll jump on to the third portion which is the outreach bit uh, what do, do, what do i mean uh, when i say outreach uh, of course the museum does a lot of outreach uh, in in the physical realm but uh, today i'll be talking about the digital outreach that we've been looking into that we've been uh, that i have been personally involved in uh, involved with for the last uh, two years and uh, which has been a crazy roller coaster ride during the period of the lockdown um, when i say outreach i'm talking about uh, use of the digital platforms we have we are very uh, very uh, we're using spaces such as facebook instagram twitter and of late we have also um, ventured out we have put out content on youtube and also we are trying to build up on our website so a lot of museums are doing a lot of things uh, tremendous work has been uh, is being produced and uh, uh, with that i will now dive right into the presentation this is the topic of our uh, presentation museum curatorial outreach in a covid and post covid world and that's a beautiful city palace museum i focused on the flowers because it's always so beautiful to see the lush greenery at all around and uh, that's our division of the topic the museum curatorial role and outreach and this what i'm presenting is kind of like a um, a brief uh, report that we had created to kind of mark what is our progress so the first thing that we did uh, when the lockdown was put into place the the museum kind of shut out for the visitors um, about 5 days prior to the actual lockdown so we had a chance of kind of building out what what would be our future steps so we began with this walk through it is a digital walk through we used a 3d uh, 3d film 3d uh, walk through that was created a while ago we were repurposing the available content we uh, kind of broke it up into bits and each day we explored a different space uh, the purpose of doing this was to highlight a new aspect people have seen this it's not something new but every day we introduced introduced a new bit something that the audience would perhaps uh, have missed out on so it was very interesting for all our audiences and we uh, received a lot of uh, good feedback about this uh, initiative uh, a lot of museums uh, across india and across the world have also taken to online games so this is some thing that we also did the bingo challenge was very uh, popular is still popular perhaps and i'm sure a lot of you may have taken part in such games so through this we tried to kind of uh, uh, make visitors uh, think back and look back at what were their experiences did did they uh, take a selfie with a particular statue did they uh, dip their hands in the in the very uh, chilly waters of the fountains so just to bring back the memories and keep the thoughts in place a very uh, good thing that has come about as a result of this uh, this lockdown this covid situation is that 
many museums have started to connect on the digital platform. It's a very encouraging platform, uh, encouraging engagement that has uh, I've I've seen taking place, and. Uh, so this this was a particular game that was going around. It was started by one museum and uh, reached out to several museums. So we were it it is your name place animal thing a little uh, different version of that. So we are looking into our collection. We are looking out for uh, so this was J K L M. We looked out for a name with J Johnston and Hoffman, an object uh, in the letter K, and. Uh, so likewise, and uh, I think this 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 activity kind of uh, brought the attention on what uh, these are things which are small details which people would otherwise have ignored. So who is the photographer? What is this detail in in this sculpture? So things like that. And then uh, what I thought would be very interesting for uh, for our viewers would be kind of like a very casual takeover. Uh, we had some of our staff coming together and uh, pitching in their everyday life. What are they doing? What are they up to? Uh, simple things which our visitors, our online visitors would kind of connect with that we are not so different with them. The purpose of doing this is because I didn't want to, uh, we didn't want to immediately put out too much content. We didn't want to blast them off with too much information. We wanted it to be very casual. And uh, so it, it did receive a lot of, uh, we did receive uh, tremendous growth in terms of the number of followers on our page. And so we could tell that this was a very successful activity. And uh, that's the thing about outreach. You always have to look out for what works for your audience, what are their likes, preferences, what, uh, what doesn't work, what, uh, how are they responding to it? And uh, accordingly, one should curate the, uh, their next steps. And uh, this is what we are trying to do in the course of this period. This is another thing that uh, the World Heritage Day quiz that we created, small, uh, small quiz type format, where we just put up images and ask people, like, do you recognize this place? Uh, uh, a particular film that was shot at the site. So the site is Sajangad. It's a fort, uh, it's a palace fort on top of a hill. And um, small questions, but I think this is one of the uh, very catchy things that audiences do love. And, and then we kind of build up to a more uh, serious, but still a little casual, uh, venture where, where we kind of showcased different aspects of work life. We had people contributing from, uh, from the conservation team, the curatorial team, uh, the, the museum system, which is a database system. We had uh, the technical, uh, the architectural conservators, each talking about a little bit uh, about their job, what are the difficulties that they face, or what are the things, the tools that they use. So it was again a very small sneak peek into what uh, what goes on behind the scenes. And then came the museum week. Uh, this was something that we decided uh, way back uh, in 2019 that we were going to do this. And the museum week is an online venture where uh, various participants, museums across the world contribute in terms of digital content also, uh, which also could be applied in your physical space. Unfortunately, we had uh, a short back that it was so sudden and we had to create content for this event. So we had seven days, seven themes, seven hashtags that we worked out. The first theme that we explored, I mean, it's a universal theme that was happening throughout, was heroes. And we decided to highlight a local hero, the story of Panadai, uh, a woman who sacrificed uh, her own son by the name Chantan to save the future heir of Mewad, which is Marana Uday Singh, the person uh, responsible for the foundation of the palace. And uh, so for our local audiences, it was something that they could immediately connect and it created a lot of engagement.
the next thing that we did for culture in quarantine, which was the second day's theme, was we, we put out a video of a local artist, watercolor artist, and we asked various, uh, various of our viewers to contribute. And if you know, Udaipur is filled with artists, and we had several people who tried to, you know, contribute and build up to what we just started. Again, a very successful thing that uh, to engage your audiences with. The third theme that we that was there was together. Uh, this uh, this was a small another game that we uh, that is available that is done by museums across the world, which is spot the difference. We we picked out a particular space. Um, it is the Vani Villas, uh, a library space in the palace, which was once used by the, uh, the historian Kaviraj Shamaldas, uh, who wrote the Veer Vinod. And um, we tried to, this space normally people would kind of ignore out elements and not look at the details. So through the small little activity, we are trying to get people to focus and look at the details. And this is what uh, particularly the curatorial role comes into place, knowing how to highlight certain elements. The fourth day was museum moments where we uh, featured various of our visitors, encouraged them to share, uh, share their pictures from the, from the palace and to uh, bring, bring them to share their experiences. And we received a lot, uh, an inflow of so many entries and people sending in uh, all their photographs, sharing, tagging the page. So again, a lot of engagement. The fifth theme was climate change, uh, that museums are not neutral. We, we recognize uh, climate change as a serious problem. Uh, this photograph that we shared was uh, of a dry Fateh Sagar lake. Uh, we also have in our personal collection of the museum, we have photographs of the dry Lake Pichola, but uh, this was something that uh, everyone who visits Udaipur is so used to seeing the full, full, uh, full body rivers and lakes and uh, this is in contrast a very a drastically different image and it kind of gets you thinking. For the sixth day, uh, the theme being museum technology, we had our conservators talk about uh, uh, how the, the, the families can get together, sit together, and kind of work towards conserving and preserving their heritage, their, their heirlooms, and uh, with simple, simple ingredients that can be found in the household, simple measures that can be done in order to avoid uh, a more drastic situation in the terms of conservation and the terms of health of their collection. And uh, this, is, uh, this is one place where we started uh, having a, a different language. They spoke in a little bit of Hindi, a little bit of English, so that it was more widely uh, understood and uh, we were able to reach out to a wider audience. And this, this found a lot of, uh, we received a lot of positive feedback, people saying that, you know, we are going to take care of our collection in the same manner. Thank you so much. It has been so helpful. So all of this, it's, uh, I think, one way that we can say that we have been successful at least to a little bit where audiences are telling, uh, telling us that, you know, it has, we can apply it to our own lives. The seventh, uh, seventh day, which was Museum Future, uh, I thought it would be a good idea to have our museum put out a statement in terms of uh, what do we plan next? What, uh, uh, what is the future? What is, what's in store for the museum? Uh, post COVID, what is the situation currently? What is going to be in the future? And uh, we had Dr. Shikha Jain sharing her views on, to, uh, on part of the entire team about what is the future plans for the City Palace Museum. Uh, we also had on the same day we were there were multiple things happening. We had uh, Dr. Shikha Jain giving us a walkthrough uh, tied up with Artex and uh, walkthrough of the same uh, 3D, 3D walkthrough that we had uh, done on day one. So this was for a different audience. 
and uh, we also had a series of webinars this was a panel discussion on the top top right panel discussion with a couple of speakers from across museums where we are discussing what are the future for the what is the future for museums across this this period of time this is a little bit of statistics uh, as to how we have uh, grown throughout this lockdown it has actually been a boost to us for our social media for our digital uh, presence if you currently see our page uh, like the one on display it shows 3000 uh, 3000 or so page likes and if uh, if you currently visit our page we have tremendously grown so uh, i think that's a lot of uh, for positive positivity for us to work harder to uh, to grow and do better for our visitors, for our online uh, visitors. International Museums Day is something that is very important to museums across the world. And uh, it was a very unfortunate thing that we couldn't be in our spaces, uh, looking at people, have them participate in our activities and uh, just do the things that we had initially planned out. We had a lot of things planned out for April and May, and uh, sadly, none of them could be done, but I'm sure we will do that in a later stage. But coming to International Museums Day, what did we do? We put out uh, a new type of content. We, we started a sign language tour in Indian um, tutorials in Indian sign language. Uh, we collaborated with a school, a local school, Viklan Kalyan Samiti. Uh, it is a school for deaf and mute. And uh, every every week we are creating various videos where she uh, the teacher is trying to communicate. She is using uh, a mix of Hindi and English and sign language and reaching out to a varied audience. Uh, this is in uh, our efforts, a small effort towards accessibility. Uh, I, I'm hoping that we could implement this to a larger scale where we have eventually have guided tours in Indian Sign Language and we have a greater uh, part, a great number of participation across uh, our varied audiences. Uh, like I said before, we have, uh, we have now uh, ventured out onto newer platforms. We, we are now on YouTube. To the left, we have a couple of our videos that we have put out. On the right, we have um, the four, um, trails that are now available on our website. Uh, we will, of course, be putting out much more content. This, the photograph trail, are, uh, we've used nine photographs uh, that are different locations of the palace, and it kind of gives people uh, a walkthrough of the entire space, how this space has transitioned of, over time, it gives them an idea about that. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing much more, creating much more content in the future. But before we jump to the, con uh, the, uh, the second part of the presentation, which is the, uh, the post-COVID situation, post-lockdown situation, I'd like us to reflect on the, the, the situations that we have faced uh, during this time. and. Uh, see how we can address that. I'd like to just start this as uh, highlighting some points, putting out a question. We could obviously work on it later, but uh, the first thing is access to and availability or rather the dirt of resources. Uh, resources, when, I'm, when I talk of resources, I talk about the internet. We've had a tremendous uh, struggle with internet, people using uh, their own internet uh, and uh, having bad network network issues, connectivity issues, and yet still have to work and deliver. We've had uh, a struggle to have access to our own content. We've had uh, to repurpose our content. We have had to make to create new content. Uh, there's of course a lot of things that could be discussed in this aspect. Uh, the other thing is increased competition. Well, I said that museums across the world have been very encouraging, very uh, 
very supportive. But uh, one thing must be admitted is that uh, there has been a tremendous increase in competition. Museums are a little bit competitive. Uh, Personally, I feel that, you know, you see other people creating content like that and you are encouraged and also stressed to create uh, content, to create more content, deliver more uh, content. And it results in an increased workload. Uh, it isn't as glamorous as it seems. It isn't just social media posts that are put out. It is tremendous amount of hard work. It is uh, not a nine to five job. It is almost literally 24 seven that the mind is constantly at play. Unless we ensure, uh, unless we look at how we can address these small little things about how we can ease the situation, how, how we can provide access, how we can provide better connectivity in case of the internet. Uh, I, 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 I think it's one thing that we should do, address the situation so that uh, if in the future such a thing, God forbid, happens, we are ready, we are able to uh, fight it in a better manner and deliver better. Uh, the next point, the last point is what are the opportunities uh, uh, post the COVID, post the lockdown. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the museum opening so that uh, we have a better access to our spaces, to our content and are able to do much more. Uh, I think the situ this situation has kind of uh, encouraged, if not forced us to look into newer uh, possibilities, newer ventures to head right into. We would now perhaps look at online shopping, uh, creating more content in terms of educational kits, eBooks, uh, more digital activities, um, of course, online exhibitions, we are working on them. We are also, we'll also be introducing, reintroducing past exhibitions. So it, it, kind of, uh, it kind of gives us an opportunity to work on these. So um, definitely it has been one thing that has been positive out of this whole situation. You can always stay connected with us. These are our, our social media handles. You could take a screenshot of this if you like. And uh, uh, that's me against uh, Lake Pichola. And this is my email ID in case anyone has any questions and would like to drop them. Um, lastly, do remember to maintain social distancing, avoid contact, crowd, sanitize, even if the lockdown opens out and we are free, remember to stay safe, stay happy. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Chelsea. That was an amazing lecture. And thank you for giving us a virtual tour of the collection of the City Palace Museum at Udaipur. Uh, one thing's for sure that the people may say that museums are murdagars, but you have shown us that museums are live, vibrant, and even going out to the people and reaching them within their home via the mobile devices, whether it is the mm -hmm. uh, computers or the phones. I have two questions for you from the participants. Uh, firstly, uh, when you talk about uh, accessibility and inclusion, uh, what can be done for migrant workers who have been working at the museum complex? Uh, for So a lot of us... Uh, so a few of our uh, people employed in the palace have continued to stay put. Few of them have still been stationed at the palace. So it's not like uh, we're completely closed down. There's still, you know, we don't completely put you out. We're still open, we still keep you in, and we ensure that we care for you and you're taken care of. Like uh, you're from Mumbai, but now currently you're Hello? placed at, uh, you're at Mum uh, you're at Udaipur and, uh, but you're from Mumbai. So you're still in place. Mm -hmm. uh, likewise, the second question is how to support museums specifically on revenue terms. We know that museums have shut, but you are reaching out to the public and you are placing some form of investment into digital media. So what about uh, a planning say for 
revenue generation specifically in terms of museums in this covid time uh so like i mentioned we would now be looking into newer ventures we would be yeah so we would be working on uh, say uh, online exhibitions some of which could be paid uh we would have uh, we are working towards opening up an online store uh so there's no uh, like you know no cut of uh, revenue so books will be able to be purchased we will uh, create more content which can be like you know like a merchandise so yes we we are working towards that and eventually hopefully we will see the 